Now, the, the Dolphins weren't content to just do one trade. They shook things up not long after the first trade was announced by doing a deal with the Eagles to go from 12 back to six, and the Eagles get the 12th overall pick and a first-round pick in 2022 from the Dolphins, who have a lot of them. So I don't know what the Dolphins are thinking at six, but you know what? Hey, if it's all three quarterbacks going one, two, three, Jaguars, Jets, 49ers, you basically have the third overall pick again if you weren't going to take a quarterback. See, this tells me the Dolphins have decided either they're not taking a quarterback at all and they're sticking with Tua or or the guy they really like they think is still going to be there at six if they decide to go quarterback. I'm going to lean more towards saying that the Dolphins are sticking with Tua for now, and they're going to try to build around him and see what they can do, Miles. I, I would agree with you on that, and, and really it's because there could be a run of four quarterbacks to start off the draft, so you don't necessarily know who that fourth quarterback is going to be, whether the Falcons decide to take that player or they decide to trade back for another team to another team that would want that player who's still there at number four. And then you could, you know, you pick whoever else is there, but no matter what, I think that the dolphins are going to get a really high quality player at number six overall, because you think about it, even if those it's only the top three that are quarterbacks, you're still got, you know, Penny Sewell, Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, Devonte Smith, Jalen Waddle, all of those guys. I mean, that's, that's five names right there but are really high quality players that really I think could be top five picks in any other situation. If you didn't have so many quarterback needy teams, you could get one of those guys. And I think any one of those guys would make the dolphins a much better team, especially if you're talking about somebody like Kyle, uh, like, like Pitts, you know, Sewell, I mean, you've got a tackle. That's going to be great. I mean, he's just been so, so good there for Oregon chase, a really good number one wide receiver. All of those guys I think could really help Miami. So I think they're in a great spot. Yeah, I, I think that's the bottom line. If they're not going quarterback, they're still going to get a great player. And we're at the point where we're close enough to the draft that teams have made their evaluations. They've made up their minds. They've had access via Zoom to talk to these guys multiple times. Pro days have happened. A film has been studied. Coaches have been able to get involved and chime in with their viewpoints. It's been months for some of these coaches. So I think this is all... Uh, the time for these kinds of moves. I'm still fascinated by why the Eagles would slide back from six to 12 now, because you could sit in that spot and wait, you don't have to make that trade now, unless they're thinking the dolphins, well, the dolphins had to have made it clear it's now or never. And the Eagles, the Eagles bit, but, you know, if it's not the Dolphins, you could sell that pick to somebody else based upon what's there at number six. I'm surprised the Eagles did it unless unless this is their way of eliminating the temptation of taking a quarterback at number six. If three go in the first three picks, no QB at four, no QB at five. If we're not there at six, we can't take a quarterback and we don't have to worry about disrupting what we already have. I, I'm just surprised because I thought maybe they could get more if they waited until that pick was on the clock, Miles. Perhaps, but I think guaranteeing yourself that you're going to get another number one or number first round pick, I should say, in the 2022 draft, I, I think that that's maybe worth doing at this point, especially for Miami. Look, if you think that Miami's maybe not going to be as good as they think that they're going to be next year, then that might be why you do this, because at a certain point, it's going to mean that your draft pick next year is a little bit higher than some of these other picks that might be coming in for you. So I understand it from that perspective, but also that report that we heard a few weeks ago from Chris Mortensen that they wanted to build, uh, that Jeffrey Lurie, I should say, the owner of the team, right, wanted to build around Jalen Hurts, that he wanted to do everything he could to support Jalen Hurts. That is what this trade signals to me, that Everything Mortensen said in that report is absolutely true. They want to make sure that they can do what they can to build around the QB. And that might be why you're eliminating the temptation of maybe picking one at six because you think you already have one. But I think the jury's still out on Hurts. We've seen that that much of him. I think he had some good moments, had some tougher moments too. But for right now, it's pretty clear. They think that this is a rebuild. It's going to be a multi-year rebuild. And they want to do it with the guy that they already have at QB that they took last year. So 
I just think that from that perspective, if, if that's the way you're going into it thinking, then I like this trade for the Eagles because it means that you gained a couple of first round picks that you're going to need in order to build this team. I agree, and the Eagles definitely are in a spot where they have a lot of work to do to get back to where they were just a few years ago. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.